Hey everyone, my name is KJ and I'm the student pastor here at the chapel. I'm so glad that you've chosen to attend this house party tonight and I want to tell you why. When we introduce a new theme each month at Motion Night, the message is loaded with so many great truths and concepts about Jesus and what he's done for us. And since you're only hearing that one big message once a month, unless you go back and rewatch it on YouTube, there's a chance you might miss or forget something important to your faith. It's a lot of information or maybe even new truths all at once. And we get that. And that's why house parties like this exist. Think of them as motion groups. These house parties are designed to help you take what you learned at motion night one step further, to help you unpack it and make sense of it, to ask questions and to learn from other students just like you. This is what living in community is all about. And I'm loving this series on the promises of God. I lead two house parties, one on Wednesday night like the one you're in right now, and one on Sunday evenings for middle schoolers. And the conversations, you guys, the conversations that I've been having with students about this whole idea of God's promises has been unreal. I love watching you guys make sense of this and begin to apply it to your own lives and your own specific situations. And this is exactly how God's Word comes alive and transforms us. So, Know that I'm really proud of you for digging deep and challenging yourself to allow the Holy Spirit to make you more like Jesus. Tonight, I want us to look at a character who had incredible confidence in God. This is the last house party for this series, Promises of God. And we're going to look at a guy named Abraham. And his story is really important. And there's so much we can learn from him when it comes to God's promises. We're going to look briefly at two promises that God made to Abraham. The first we see in Genesis 13, 16. God says, I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. And just two chapters later, God says, look up to the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have, Abraham. So if you're taking notes, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Abraham, he's a good guy. God's got plans for him. God speaks to Abraham and tells him these plans. Abraham's going to be the father of many nations, and all people will be able to trace themselves back to him. Okay, that's promise one. Let's look at promise two. If God said he's going to make Abraham have an immeasurable amount of descendants, then that would imply that Abraham would have to be a father. But here's the catch. Abraham is 100 years old already. In Genesis 17, 19, it says, God replied, Sarah, your wife, will give birth to a son for you. You will name him Isaac. And I will confirm my covenant with him and his descendants as an everlasting covenant. The word covenant here can easily be replaced with the word promise. A little further on in verse 21, God says, My covenant, or promise, will be confirmed with Isaac, who will be born to you and Sarah about this time next year. Okay. So here's where this gets interesting. Try and stay with me. Promise number one, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And promise two, this will begin through the birth of your son, Isaac. It will be continued on through him. So now, fast forward. Genesis 22. God tests Abraham's faith in him by instructing him to sacrifice Isaac on a burning altar. Abraham's faith in God's promises was put to the ultimate test, but Abraham continued to trust God. Why? And how did he do this? Abraham's confidence in light of his impending task testifies to a deeper confidence, his profound confidence in God. Not only had God asked him to do this startling task, but Abraham was certain that God would provide a means of deliverance. 
If you read this story, and I would encourage you, if you do it at the house party or do it at home on your own, this is one of my favorite Bible stories. If you read this story, Genesis 22, Abraham told his servants to wait while he and Isaac, his son, went to worship God on the mountain. Knowing that God commanded him to sacrifice his son, Abraham told his servants, don't miss this, Abraham told his servants that he and the boy would come back soon. In Genesis 22, 5, Abraham says, we will worship and then we will come back to you. He knew that God had promised to create a great nation through Isaac. Therefore, for this reason, Abraham knew that God would either deliver Isaac from death or resurrect him following his death. Either way, Abraham knew that God would keep his word. Wow, I am always amazed by Abraham. The fact that he didn't doubt, question, argue, complain, wrestle with God over this, fight with God on this. He followed through with the task that God gave him, even though it was an unbelievable challenge. Can you imagine that? God giving you something so big like sacrifice your only son. Do that for me. Show your faith to me. And Abraham just said, God, whatever you need, whatever you ask, you got it. Or maybe Abraham was his confidence, his faith and trust in God's promises so secure that no matter what God asked of him, he was determined to believe no matter what. I like to think so. I'd like to think that Abraham's faith in God, in God's promises, in the words that he told Abraham specifically, he knew that he could trust God, and regardless of the outcome, God's word was true. That whatever he spoke to him, he could trust it. Students, God can be trusted. God's word is reliable and accurate, and we can always depend on it. Even if God tells you to do one thing and then tells you something else that makes absolutely no sense to us, remember this story. Remember God's covenant promise to Abraham, to Sarah, to Isaac. Trust that he knows what he's doing. Remember the goodness of God and his faithfulness to you in the past, also that it carries over into your future, whatever that may be. He's never going to let you down or fail you. Remember at motion night, we read Hebrews 10, 23, which says that he can be trusted to keep his promises. Trust him today. Now in a couple minutes, we're going to split into our discussion groups. So don't forget, next Wednesday, we've got first Wednesday. And in two weeks, we've got a motion night planned that I think every student you know needs to hear. So bring somebody with you. They're not going to want to miss it. Thanks for coming tonight, and we'll see you next time.